Hello and welcome to this podcast. Uh, today, it's my pleasure to welcome Michael Bonny to shed a light on pressing internet issues from a politician and uh, an SME advocate's point of view. As a Polish politician, Michal was a pioneer in digital matters, both as the first Minister of Digital Affairs in Central Eastern Europe and as the author of several strategy plans on how to develop the digital economy and society in his home country. In 2014, he took, he took his expertise to Brussels as a member of the European Parliament, where he led on key digital files covering privacy, 5G, interoperability, open science cloud, and artificial intelligence. Since 2019, Michal works with different organizations, including SME Connect, the Martin Center, and the Digital Enlightenment Forum, while also sharing his knowledge of digital matters with the University for Social Sciences and Humanities in Warsaw, Poland, and the Europe, European University in Cyprus. So, Michal, you know about our three plus one format. Uh, you get three questions and one soapbox moment. Um, so let's start with question one. How do you interpret uh, the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact this may have on telecom operators? Let me give you the floor. Thank you very much, Caroline, for invitation and the possibility to present my view on some issues. When I have been a Minister of Digital Affairs in Poland, I remember our discussion on the Digital Poland uh, project uh, and operational program for using European financing uh, to support the digital development. It was in 2012-2013. There were three main three objectives. The first one, uh, digital education and digital literacy uh, addressed to all generation and especially to elderly people uh, to make them not excluded from the digital development. The second one, uh, which was focused on development of all kinds of e-services from uh, administ public administration uh, via e-health uh, uh, possibilities and solutions, uh, accessibility to open data and reuse of open data um, uh, prepared uh, uh, by big cities uh, and public institutions. And of course, to open the possibility for digital school, which uh, meant at that time uh, to uh, uh, open some educational sources for schools. And the second, the third issue, the, th the third goal was related to the quality and accessibility of network. And it was clear uh, that there is a very big division between rural areas and uh, urban areas. And I uh, remember that representatives of uh, telco business presented the view, if we will uh, be uh, it will be easier uh, to uh, invest in rural areas uh, to make shift from 3G to 4G at that time, mm -hmm. when the digital services and uh, uh, digital literacy will grow mm -hmm. because it, cause, it will cause the bigger traffic, data uh, traffic consumption, and as a result, we will have the probably higher return of the investments. So uh, it was important at that time, and I think that it is important also now. Users' accessibility to more content and services online is uh, crucial for digital development that was understood at that time. It should be understood now as a driver for more profitable investment. The impact was positive, bigger traffic, and the stronger economic position of telco. But now I understand the situation. There is a pro problem with sufficient sources for investments uh, for 5G, uh, FTTH, uh, very high capacity mm -hmm. networks. Uh, there is a lack of adequate sources uh, uh, for these uh, uh, investments. And this is a background probably, in my opinion, 
uh, uh, of uh, some ideas and some concepts. For example, to establish the new model with uh, financial, uh, with requirement of financial participation of OTT uh, as a crucial partner uh, at the market and uh, the proposal of direct uh, agreements between telco uh, companies and OTT as it was presented in Ethno report uh, nearly two months ago. There is a reference uh, in this report to the Declaration of Digital Rights and Principles for Digital Decade document discussed now in uh, uh, the European uh, uh, Parliament. Uh, uh, all market players benefiting from the digital transformation make a fair and proportionate uh, contribution to the cost of public goods, services and infrastructure. And I agree, but it was mentioned, not only infrastructure, but also public goods and services. And in my view, we need to understand that in the situation uh, in which 54% uh, of data traffic is coming from uh, five big tech uh, companies, uh, this is a little controversial for telco operators, but I think that we need to find the, uh, the model uh, uh, in which uh, uh, we can uh, quietly, calmly consider uh, this kind of participation, not killing uh, um, uh, the activities of uh, separated parts of the uh, um, uh, internet value chain as uh, 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 those uh, who deliver services and content are in connection with operators, but uh, uh, playing their different role. Um, I, I, I think your um, what you've just stated actually ties in really well in, in the second question, which I'm going to put on screen now, which is, yes, you know, there are difficulties uh, for uh, telecom operators to get capital uh, for the investments required for infrastructure. But what are the inherent dangers, if any, of big tech? You know, you mentioned five big tech companies. You could mention seven, I mean, but a small crowd of companies that are usually American uh, being requested to pay for the network of telecom operators. Yeah, it's a very interesting question, uh, because firstly, what does it mean requested? Uh, request uh, uh, and finally, as a result of negotiations and contracts between telco companies and big tech uh, with the compensation mechanism, but compensation for what? I think that it should be described much more uh, clear. Secondly, why only big tech? Uh, they are using uh, uh, networks for data transmission, uh, for traffic, but on the other side, they are organizing services which are used by users, uh, uh, which are bringing uh, uh, profits to telco um, uh, uh, companies. Uh, and the telco companies uh, have profits uh, uh, and incomes related to our subscriptions, uh, to additional forms of paying for te telco services. We are also paying for the volume of data mm -hmm. and it's related to the price uh, uh, which we are uh, paying. So in my view, we need to consider uh, that big tech and all, all providers of uh, uh, delivery of content and uh, uh, services are very important uh, as an intermediary level, intermediary level for uh, SMEs development. For us as users, it's, it's obvious, but, but for SMEs development, uh, uh, and I think after COVID, it's uh, especially visible uh, that SMEs started to use digital tools for their development and they are much more convinced now uh, uh, to use uh, uh, digital tools. Uh, it's of course related to services, to content via network. And I think that we need to be very cautious, uh, uh, not uh, uh, creating some new unintended burdens uh, for SMEs. And the third issue is related to, to this model, if it should be mandatory, the response for this request or voluntary 
uh, and I think that uh, uh, we need to consider at the same time some unintended consequences, uh, for example, for SMEs, limitation of access uh, to some services and how providers, uh, not only big tech, but uh, uh, all providers, all OTT providers, uh, will calculate the cost uh, of this new model and participation in uh, in telco investments, uh, uh, how it will impact on the prices for services. Uh, uh, it will be for us as users, it will be for SMEs, I think very, uh, uh, could be very dangerous. Uh, uh, so it will, uh, it will lead me uh, to the situation some years ago when we have discussed it was a very hot discuss, public discussion on net uh, uh, neutrality mm -hmm. uh, i remember this discussion and uh, 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 we need to uh, understand uh, uh, that there are some concerns uh, when uh, there is a threat or danger uh, for net neutrality uh, it was described very perfectly by internet society organization but i remember uh, the first one uh, internet fast lanes yeah. for whom and what is the background for for creating these fast lanes uh, the new possibilities for blocking and filtering uh, some kind of throttling which uh, uh, can uh, li limit the user upload and download zero rated services uh, this is illusion, but on the other hand, uh, with uh, preferential access uh, 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 and special advantages for some groups of clients and the limits to market competition. I don't want to repeat uh, now in 2022 uh, 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 those threats, but when we are touching the problem of net neutrality, uh, uh, we of course need to uh, um, uh, uh, consider uh, uh, those uh, issues. Thank you. Uh, and yes, the, the net neutrality debate, it's, it's odd to have to talk about it yet again uh, after a, a decade. Um, we're uh, coming to the last question uh, before the soapbox moment. Uh, and that's maybe more of a technical question, uh, which is basically in the ETHNO report that you mentioned previously, the contribution uh, of big tech and telcos in infrastructure uh, is uh, compared. I mean, uh, so telecom operators are comparing their investments uh, with those of big tech or content and service providers. Uh, do you think that is an appropriate uh, comparison? I'm not sure. Uh, when we are discussing, for example, uh, about uh, roads and highways. There is no pressure on car factories and uh, uh, industry to participate, to contribute to investments at that area. But there are taxes coming from uh, automobile factories and industry uh, from selling the cars. We are paying some taxes buying the car from individual drivers and so on and so on. The system which supports the roads investment. And it is not comparable. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we want to develop very high capacity network, uh, because it's a real challenge now, yep. we need to create the most adequate financial sources from the European and national budgetary sources, as for example, this is the idea, but I think it's very important, uh, uh, use incomes coming from national auctions for 5G, in which telco companies are paying as a direct source for public investments in telco internet uh, networks not going those portion of money to, to the general budget. I think it would be very, very important to consider it. Uh, and as it is, uh, um, uh, uh, there should uh, use uh, sources coming from telco companies, their incomes and uh, profits. But I agree that we need more incentives to invest in the new networks coming from taxes, 
and this is the question of uh, taxation also addressed to those five seven big tech companies american companies because it should be uh, it should be done we are discussing about it but it should be done we mm -hmm. can discuss about the OECD model uh, uh, and i agree but on the other hand it should be done uh, and probably we have to consider how to support the network's development in Europe, but not using this a little desperate model proposed uh, as a danger for net neutrality with no transparent, in my opinion, and clear premises with a long list of unintended consequences as, uh, for example, the new forms of discrimination in accessibility of uh, some services and uh, uh, content. The infrastructural needs, it's uh, important, are crucial for the digital Europe and uh, the uh, digital decade perspectives. But we need to find the solution which uh, will be based on the clear principles and allow to avoid, firstly, avoid unintended consequences of the discrimination of users, individuals, uh, SMEs, for which the balanced use of services and content uh, uh, via high quality networks is crucial for their future development and contribution to the economic uh, growth uh, in all uh, Europe. Uh, secondly, the threats of any form of limitation of accessibility for services and content for users. And the third, what we should avoid, the danger of non-transparent and non-building the level playing field for all partners of the internet value chain, from companies generating content and possibilities for many new services. We are just before big changes in the area of e-health. Uh, and we need to consider how, how to prepare to this. Uh, um, uh, via um, uh, all kinds uh, of uh, 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 companies generated those services and uh, it leads me to the uh, uh, all kinds of users as uh, SMEs mentioned by me earlier, individual users and also public institutions which are involved in uh, delivering uh, for example, open culture, open education, and so on. So I think that uh, uh, what is the most important to create the background for cooperation and clear rules to fulfill uh, all duties related to the played role by all partners of this internet value chain. Uh, thank you, Michael. That that was uh, extremely, um, I would say, clear and and detailed. And and I think the two key words I I took out of that was unintended consequences, and taking the time to do something that is um, long term sustainable and and helpful. Um, so we're reaching that that moment where you are now looking at uh, the strong ladies uh, leading uh, the European Union, uh, Ursula and Roberta and you have uh, one minute to uh, deliver a message to them. Uh, it's your soapbox moment, uh, so make sure it's a strong uh, message and uh, let's hope that they're listening. The first one, understand and emphasize that there is a positive link between the growth of accessibility of services and content for users, more traffic, and opportunities to create more balanced economically result of telco operations, current and future investments. It especially uh, should be used in the reference to the development and accessibility of internet in the rural areas. The second one, uh, try to find the new model of network development investments, base it on the new budgetary solutions applied equally to all possible subjects and used innovative sharing uh, forms and participatory forms, but uh, uh, it shouldn't be implemented uh, in the mandatory way. And the third one, avoid all possible unintended consequences for usual users, for small medium enterprises, for public in institutions, because uh, those uh, unintended consequences can bring the danger of uh, discrimination and break 
the net neutrality principle, which is important. You see the experience of an MEP that's used to talk to at a specific time of one minute or two minutes. Um, thank you so much, Michal. I think, I think there's a lot of food for thought coming out of uh, this podcast. Um, I also uh, see that the SME um, concerns are actually quite close to the user concerns at the end of the day, yeah. which is to be able to continue to access um, the services and content of their choice and to be the ones in control of who the winners and losers are in the internet ecosystem, not to have other factors decide that. So uh, it's, it's, it's nice to see that commonality between small businesses and uh, individual users. Um, I think we we will have a lot of uh, discussions in the future on this. <laughs> I don't think uh, it will be uh, closed uh, quickly, uh, but uh, I'm very happy that SME Connect will be part of that conversation. And I uh, look forward to uh, continuing it uh, with you, your partners, and uh, obviously with other voices that have a view on the internet ecosystem. Thank you so much, Thank Michel. Thank you very much, Caroline, for invitation and for exchange of the views. I think what is the most important is to discuss some issues. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, before we are starting with legislation, uh, I think that we need to discuss and uh, describe all aspects, uh, all dimensions, uh, and describe some dangerous threats and some opportunities. I think it's the, the, the good background for the future legislative solutions. Thank you. Let's hope that those discussions uh, will uh, start soon and that they will be constructive. Thank you very much, Michael, and have a great day.